So, so this this morning, morning I will be I doing will be a doing message, message on Psalm, Psalm 50. 50. And this is out of the contemporary English, which I will be using for the remainder of the time that we have in this. Remaining time. Of this message. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would grant us wisdom and knowledge concerning this chapter. Help us to think from your perspective. Let it be apostolic and prophetic and empower me to. To preach this prophetic word that shall be edification for our spirits and minds. In Christ Jesus' name we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Without further ado, Turn over to Psalm 50. Psalm 50, verse 1. This is out of the C E V. And it reads. From east to west, the powerful Lord God has been calling together everyone on earth. So what do we got (coughs) going on in here? What we have going on here is God giving David a prophecy to give Israel. In other words, it is a prophecy for God's Elect, elect and very elect, very elect in the Old, in the Old Testament. Testament. And for God's, for God's elect, elect today, today and on, on into the into future. The future. So, what so is, what is God? God through David saying to Israel. He says, from the beginning, God, Calling calling his elect elect together together into himself in the beginning. beginning Currently is is and shall shall accomplish. accomplish. That's what he's saying. saying, uh, God is saying to Israel. Israel. God's God's 
Old Testament elect and very elect. And God is telling us, telling you, that from the beginning till the end, calling his elect and very elect to himself. And verse 2 sets it in context. God shines brightly from the Zion, the most beautiful city. And where does he summon his elect in the True and real temple of God, the second tabernacle, is his throne of his empire, of the heavens and earth, and all his elect who are. Elected by a seed, Jesus Christ's seed. And who are God's elect and very elect? The house of Judah and the house of Israel and the descendants from the sixth day. Creation. Because it says from the east, because it says from the east to the west. God's elect of Israel during the time God's elect in the first world age and heaven age God's elect in the New Testament, the house of Judah, and the Gentiles who believe and accept the Christ as the Lord and Savior. And who is of that, of the Gentiles in the first, uh, in the New Testament, the house of Israel, and the six day creation that was scattered abroad
Because we know, even during this time, you had gods. During this time when David spoke this prophetic word to Israel, you had some Israelites backsliding, not following the Lord, not doing right, not acting right, and so forth, and backsliding. But God managed, managed to preserve his seed. Then under King Solomon, Israel became an empire. Then after King Solomon, the Israel broke up into two kingdoms the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Israel with their own kings. And then, both the house of Israel and the house of Judah was was punished. punished. And the two kingdoms, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Israel. And then they were punished and were all cast into captivity and throughout the world. The house of Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel, went into Syrian captivity first. They ascended, uh, were there for a long time, and they ascended over the Caucasus Mountains, migrated Europe, Alaska, Canada, America, and settled there, who were later called Caucasians. That's where the house of Israel is at. And they were made as the Gentiles. And then, 200 years later, the house of Judah went into Babylonian captivity for 70 years, returned back to the Holy Land, rebuilt the temple, shortened their name to Jews, and they were there until the destruction of the temple in 70 AD and were scattered throughout the world because they are apostates. Israel received their punishment for their apostate first. And Judah. And Judah was scattered throughout the world. And that's where they're at. And Jeremiah in the Old Testament took the daughters of the last king of Judah to Egypt, and one of the daughters was named Scota, and Scota married, and thus out of Scota came Scotland. And all the European monarchs, and they mixed with the house of Judah later on. And then Christ established his rule, his reign in the first century. The millennial reign. And his empire. And decided, so to speak, speak. at that point, he shall gather all his elect unto himself into this new 
empire. All of God's elect around the world gather. God's elect. Christ gathering. Christ wanting to gather. Christ gathering his elect unto himself into the new the empire of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And on top of that, Jesus Christ chose to use his elect and very elect to crush Satan during the millennial period of time which is the between Christ's ascension and return and chose to use God's elect very elect to Christianize the whole entire world ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity through the systematic preaching and teaching of the word of God and using this to Christ Jesus' advantage he chose to use this to crush Satan and to completely defeat Satan through this system. And thus bringing his new crisis empire to completion for all eternity in the final world age and heaven age. And in this passage, there is much, much more being said. Because as you know, throughout the psalm, we have sometimes the word sila meaning to reflect upon this and essentially another aspect that's being communicated in Psalm 50 verse 1 and 2 that God has been gathering his elect to himself all three world ages and heaven ages the world that was the world that is the world that is to come Verse 3, our God approaches, but not silently. A flaming fire comes from, flaming fire comes first, and a storm surrounds him. So, God saying to Israel, is making a declaration of a prophecy to Israel.
Hello, hello. In the common community. In the in the in the covenant of the four four uh, first dispensation of grace in that community we have it. Some, Some not, not keeping, keeping the, the first, first dispensation of the covenant of grace, grace, and those, those who, were, who keeping were keeping the first dispensation of the covenant of grace, grace. during this during time, time, although minor, minor compared to. to what is to come, Christ is making a declaration, a prophecy to Israel. I'm coming to punish you. Coming to coming judge, to judge you. you. Verse 4, Verse God four, comes God to comes judge his judge people. people. He shouts, he shouts to the heavens, to the heavens and, and to the to earth. The earth. Broader sense, sense of the interpretation. The interpretation. Again, again, is, is when, when the kingdom, kingdom when, when David's, David's descendant sits, sits on the, on the throne, throne of God being God Jesus in the first century, is coming to judge the apostate house of Judah for their apostasy and scatter them, so to speak. And through, and through the seed, the seed of David, of David God, shall God shall punish, punish the, the disbelievers, disbelievers for their sinful, sinful wicked ways. Through this seed, seed, which has which two has sides, two sides to, it. to it, grace, grace and, truth. and truth. And bringing and about, bring judgment, about judgment, judgment, of course, on the, on the apostate. apostate. House of Judah in the first century to the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem 70 AD and the scattering throughout to earth and of course through the seed of David David judge through the systematic preaching and teaching of the word of God those Unbelieving, unsaved, for the wickedness, 
not only in this lifetime through uh, the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God, but the judgment to come, the last and final judgment, the great white throne judgment that all will stand before. And those that were elected to be punished will be elected to be punished. And those who are elected to be blessed will be elected to be blessed. And again, and there is a complete Christian theistic worldview expressed in those verses and he's, and he's also referring to the first world age and heaven age and the second world age and heaven age and the third world age and heaven age that he elected and each of those world ages and heaven ages, God elected some to be saved and to be blessed, and some elected to damnation. And punished, punished in the first world age and heaven age. That, that being the, being the catabol, catabol that was spoken, spoken in, in Genesis, Genesis chapter, chapter one, one, verse one and two. Verse one and two. God created the heavens and the earth to it. To it. Then, as we've read before, and uh, I'm going to turn to that real quick. Uh, verse 2, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep. Waters and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters that the living. So that word was became. Referring to the catapult, we can read that also. The catapult, in, uh, I think Second Peter uh, chapter three, which I'm not going to go into. Second Peter chapter three. Yeah, Second yeah, Peter, Peter chapter three. three.
And we read about the head of Paul in Revelation 12. Yeah, Revelation 12. So, what was the catapult? The overthrow of Satan. In other words, that was the period of time when Satan was Lucifer, one of the highest angels that God blessed, and he got into his mind that he wants to be praised and worshipped and so he started a rebellion and one third of the angels rebelled against God in the first world age and heaven age and the rest did not and so he destroyed God destroyed the first world age and heaven age and the span of 8,000 8, non-literal years, years, God, God established, established the Second World Age and Heaven Age and wiped because wipe. he, he didn't want to destroy his children, children. so he, he destroyed, destroyed the First World Age and Heaven Age. First place, established the second world age and heaven age. So, man, so everyone will be born once innocent with the first world age and heaven age memory wiped from your brain to choose to serve God. Or to, or to rebel against, against God. God. We'll stop there. So now I'm just generalizing. Not going to go too much in depth on that. Because I've already discussed it in many other sermons. Which I may do again at some point in time. So... What do we got? got? Again, again, in the first world age and heaven age, age, God God elected elected some to be blessed blessed and some some not. not. Then, then God, God punished, punished Some to be blessed and some not to be blessed. Some to be punished and some to be blessed. Some to glory. Some to damnation. Curse. Eve. Eve, the six-day Six creation, day creation, Adam and Eve, Eve. disobeyed God, God by, choosing by choosing to eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil that God told them not to eat from, and God punished them. And 
put a curse on them. That is what you call, you might say, a general judgment that's upon us all in this second world age and heaven age, that we will all die. Point once to die. see God's talking about all his judgments upon the wicked and sinful in all three world ages and heaven ages And it all it takes all three. Takes three. It, all it all takes three. Takes three. Seed, Seed of David. Of David. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The seed of David, David. the seed seed of Abraham, the seed seed of of the seed of Kingdom of David. David. How will he execute this judgment? judgment? Covenant of works works. and the covenant of grace. grace. Verse five five. Call my followers together. Offered me a sacrifice, and we made an agreement. This agreement meaning the covenant of grace. <clears throat> what the covenant basically? Uh, an agreement. Or you might say, you know, a legal document. Stamp with God's seal. His real seal. So again, God's still making a declaration of a prophecy that will take place through King David to Israel. This is King David obvious, obviously being one of God's 
very elect. Very elect. And the types and shadows. Office of priest. priest. Now is one o'clock. Office of prophet and king. And mediator. Saying to them, Basically saying, uh, let's continue reading our boy for better, better context. Call my, Call my followers together. together. They offer me, they offer a, me sacrifice. a sacrifice. And we made we an made agreement. agreement. And we made we an agreement. The heavens announce God, God is the is judge, judge. And he, he is always, always honest. honest. He wants, God wants, God wants all, all of Israel, Israel. His, his elect, elect to, witness to witness the judgment. judgment. Of what is going to happen to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And what is going to happen to the unsaved? Apostate, house of Judah, and house of Israel. To witness the punishment upon the backsliding Christian. And the, and the punishments, punishments and, rewards and rewards that both the non, non both, both the non-elect non -elect and, elect and elect are 
culpable for. Determining the different rewards that the reprobate The punishments and rewards the earth deserves in hellfire, hell. And the different rewards and punishment for God's elect. And very elect. elect. Nothing, and it has has nothing to do with with earning your salvation, salvation. but only only with those those good deeds, those those which those those good and bad things things you you did. For Christ in this second world age and heaven age. And to be a witness and testimony against them. So one of the things you've got to realize... In the first first world age and heaven age, there was an apostasy apostasy that took place. place. And then then the the gods gods and then the Garden Garden of of Eden. And a covenant of works that was made with Adam and Eve and his posterity and that covenant of works was God said you may eat of anything in the tree of the garden of the garden which you may not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and Adam and Eve and all his posterity Disobey God, God, eat from that tree, tree of knowledge, knowledge of good and evil. evil. And, another and another apostasy, apostasy was committed. Was committed. The apostasy of the fall. When there was a stipulation. You can live you can and be live blessed, for, blessed all, for all the time and live, and live forever. forever. Or, or or you can choose, you can choose to, to To eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and be punished. Live forever or die, be punished.
God said there is a stipulation. And Adam and Eve broke, broke the, the covenant of works that works God made God with, Adam, with, Adam with Adam and his posterity. And his posterity. So then God made it. Made a covenant of grace with Adam and Eve and all his and her posterity. So anyways, we had the first apostasy that happened in the first world age in heaven age. And the second apostate took place, which happened in the Garden of Eden. Then the third apostasy of the House of Israel. Then you had the third apostasy with the house of Judah. Then you had the then you had the fourth apostasy. You might say the onward onward apostasies that will will take take will happen throughout the the millennium. millennium. And finally, finally, punish for all eternity eternity. for all all those apostates. Well, you, well, you sounds, sounds a little sounds bit better. Little better. Well, let me put it yeah, this way. It this way. sounds a little bit more. Little bit more. Uh, uh, anyways, anyways, the apostate, the apostasy, the, apostasy the, the, the house of Judah, Judah committed, committed, which led to the, the, the punishment, punishment of. of Judah and the 70 year Babylonian captivity. That would be the third apostasy. The fourth apostasy would be the apostasy that took place with the house of Judah in the first century that led to the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD and the scattering throughout the world. And the fifth Apostasy Apostasy is those apostasies apostasies that will take place throughout throughout history history. from the beginning beginning till the end. end. Those apostasies apostasies that will take take 
place throughout the, the millennial mediatorial reign which we are under. And then finally, all those apostasies will be punished for all eternity. And then uh, election of blessing and election of damnation will take place. And then after that, there's no more apostasies. That's, that's kind of the broad scope of what Psalm 50 is. It's a serious, serious prophetic word. Verse 7, my people, I am God, Israel, I am your God, listen to my charges against you, all you, although you, although you offer sacrifices and always bring gifts, I won't accept your offerings of bulls and goats. So what's going on there? Got some stuff Got some going stuff on there. there. Again, still, Again, still God's, God's declaration, declaration of, of his prophecy, prophecy that he foreordained for and elected to come to pass. to pass. And he's simply he's communicating that to Israel, Israel through David, David at that time, that God's, God's elect, elect during that, during that time. time. What are you saying here? And he's the same to those communicating to the backsliding. The backsliding Christians during that time that are associated with the covenant community. Those unsaved, unsaved and carnal, carnal Christians, Christians I'm going to I'm going punish you for your wickedness. For wickedness. And your unsincere hearts, hearts. And so, what that so was that mean? Some descendants of Israel, some descendants of Judah, some descendants of the Gentiles will not be saved and be punished. 
and those backsliding descendants of the house of Israel and Judah and the Gentiles will be punished because their faith is not genuine. They simply just go through the motion. So, he is saying, that I will bring conviction, conviction, repentance, and discipline in God's elect. That he will correct their sincere hearts at times. Let's continue reading. Every animal in the forest belongs to me, and so do the cattle of a thousand hills. Thousand here simply mean doesn't mean that only that God only owns a thousand cattle on a thousand hills. No, he is communicating. An unlimited number. In other words, all. Everything belongs to him. All souls belong to Christ. Verse 11, I know all the birds and the mountains and every wild creature is in my care. Verse 12, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you, because I owe the world, because I own the world and everything in it. I don't eat the meat of bulls or drink the blood of goats. Verse 14, I am God most high. The only sacrifice I want is for you to be thankful and to keep your word. Pray to me in times of trouble and I will rescue you and you will honor me. So, so much, much, much can be, can be propounded, propounded on in here. in here. Ponder upon. And God basically communicating uh, God's charge. Against Against Israel Israel is is insincere, insincere committed hearts. hearts. In other words, words, a not not genuine genuine faith faith in him. him. They are not keeping sincere 
a sincere heart, a sincere heart in Christ Jesus. In other words, not having a, a genuine faith, rather a said faith, rather than a real faith. That they're not committed. And so therefore, he shall not accept their sacrifices. And he tells them that he owns everything. All souls belong to him. In other words, without a sincere heart, the sacrifices that he, that they are making are not acceptable. is not sufficient to build them up. In the faith and edification Because without a genuine saving faith, it is absolutely and completely worthless. That it is completely meaningless. is a genuine, sincere faith from them in Him that points to Christ Jesus because they had an incorrect understanding. You might say they had an understanding that the Pharisees and Sadducees had focusing on a millennial kingdom rather than on the post-millennial kingdom that is to come because a millennial kingdom is not what God offers them. God offers them a post-millennial kingdom. And so what he wants from them is sincere, true faith in him. To want them to obey God, to serve him, and so forth to keep his, his moral, moral, civil, and civil ceremonial law, law for the elect in the Old Testament and for the elect in the New Testament, the moral, moral and civil and law. Civil.
and wants them to get wants them to go before God in their times of trouble so that God can bring about liberation and restitution and so forth in their lives. And so, anyways, so, anyways some, of the, some of the revelation that God was revealing to me in this, in this chapter. <laughs> and God told, God me, told me in the spirit, in the spirit that someone, someone needs this needs revelation. revelation. Verse 16, but to the wicked I say, you don't have the right to mention my laws or claim to keep our agreement. You refuse correction and reject my commandments. You made friends with every crook you met, and you like people who broke their wedding vows. You talked only violence and told nothing but lies. So, oh boy, we got some stuff going on there. So he got to tell us through David, his elect in the Old Testament this time, that I want true, sincere heart committed to me. Said he says to Israel, Israel. you're going to be punished. punished. For your insincere hearts. hearts. For not not keeping keeping his moral, moral, civil, civil, and ceremonial ceremonial. law. And he says to the elect, elect. all right, and then he says to the house of Israel and the house of Judah, he's going to punish them for their insincere heart, not keeping his commandments. Etc. 
said you're not keeping this moral civil it's more on civil law in other words Telling the house of Israel, the house of Judah, and the Gentiles are going to be punished for you. Not keeping my moral and civil law. Ceremonial law. Civil law only in the New Testament. Moral, civil, and ceremonial law in the Old Testament. So he's basically saying. to the house of Israel and the house of Judah and the Gentiles, sins of the six day creation. I'm going to punish you for turning your back on the covenant of grace I made with you, Will. And he's also, he's also calling, calling his elected ship up ship or straighten out. out. And get right. Get right. right for the unsaved. Punishment, punishment and damnation, damnation for all eternity, all eternity of the various, various degrees and punishments and rewards that the reprobate, reprobate will receive. And to the elect, elect disciplined, disciplined them for not, not keeping God's, God's moral, moral and civil law. Civil. Punishments and degrees that we shall receive. Tell them to get right, get straightened out. Turn back to the covenant of grace that I made with you. Because all souls, souls belong to him. him. All right. All right. Verse, 20, Verse 20, you sat, 20, you sat round gossiping, gossiping, ruining the reputation of your relatives. Verse 21, when you did all this, I didn't say a word. 
and you thought God, God is God just is like just us. us. But now, now I will I accuse will you. you. You have ignored me. So pay close attention. Or I will tear you apart. And no one can help you. Verse 23, the sacrifices that honor me is a thankful heart. Obey me. And I, your God, will show my power to save you. Now, the coolest part about this chapter is the song was a prophecy. To God's, God's very elect, very elect. to pay witness. witness. To God's, to God's millennial, millennial kingdom. kingdom. God's elect God's in the Old Testament. Testament. And God's, God's elect in the, in the New Testament. Testament. Oh, you didn't, oh, didn't get that. God's preserved remnant during the the times of the kings. What would happen? To pay witness to what will happen what will happen to the house of Israel and the house of Judah if they continue on their and the direction that they would go. And it's a prophecy pain wanting God's elect and the world to pay witness to Christ's mediatorial millennial reign. God's elect to pay witness to what what would happen to the apostate house of Judah during the first century when God punished them for their apostasy and putting Christ to death, bringing judgment upon the apostate house of Judah with the destruction of the temple and Jerusalem in 70 AD and the scattering both the non-elect and elect to pay witness to Christ's mediatorial, millennial, victorious reign over sin and death. And to pay witness to what will happen to God's Elect and non-elect at the great white throne judgment. And 
and that plays. And this chapter communicates the whole panacea. Of scope, to see, see the panic, see scope, scope of this, of this psalm, psalm covering, covering from the beginning we tell the end, end. taking take into, into consider this as this psalm takes into consideration, consideration the whole panacea of history from beginning to end. So what this truly communicates a post millennialist partial partial preterist and and Partial historist and partial futurist is what is encompassed in this chapter in Revelation, really. It, it communicates the full. But precise, precise three world ages and heaven ages it covers in the song. It lines nicely with. Uh, the book of Revelation, because what truly the book of Revelation teaches us is a partial preterist, partial historist, and partial futurist. Coming more and more every day. My walk with the Lord as I study the scriptures, which I truly believe is what is being communicated in scripture, is the post millennialist, partial preterist. Partial, partial historist and partial, partial futurist view. view. Coming le- and I'm becoming less and less a post partial preterist. Interesting thing. Not only is this a prophetic word for you, brothers and sisters, but it is a prophetic word for the prophetic royal coat of arms ministry, the Reformed Pentecostal Anglo 
Saxon and Royal Empire of the Kingdom of God denomination. God is calling this ministry move uh, calling us and this calling this ministry into the direction and belief of the post-millennialist partial presence partial historic partial futurist direction that is the calling and that is the direction that God wants us to move towards and it is a prophetic word to you that God right now is moving the world into the direction of the post-millennialist partial preterist, partial historist, partial futurist direction. Because God is saying that is the true panacea of Scripture. And God is saying to this ministry that we, that that God is saying to this ministry that He will empower this ministry to effectively and clearly teach this post millennialist partial preterist, partial historist, partial futurist. To effectively teach that and make it clearly clear. With the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God, And God wants you to be, is calling you to be a part of this move, this direction. He's calling you to get up off your seat. Go to YouTube. Type in. Archduke Bishop Dr. Robert L. Maxwell and start down and load these messages on this page because they're hot and start building churches start Reaching people with the gospel starts being a mighty, awesome change agency in our world. Now you got to remember, though, that oh, you got to hear this. Oh, well, you gotta hear this. Oh, well, you got to get this.
Eschatology, one of the essential doctrines of the Christian faith, the E and doctrine. The word of eschatology is an intimidating word with a simple meaning, meaning the study of end times, while the meaning of eschatology is simple to grasp, it, its importance is difficult to Importance is too difficult to over emphasize. Far from being a mere branch in the theological tree, eschatology is the root that provides life and luster to every fiber of its being. Put it another way, eschatology is the thread that weaves the tapestry of scripture into a harmonious pattern. It is, it is the study of everything we long and hope for. Early in Genesis, Adam and Eve fell into a life of constant sin, terminated by death. The rest of Scripture chronologues God's unfolding plan of redemption. Although Christians debate secondary aspects of eschatology such as the timing of the tribulation or the meaning of the millennium, we are united in the truth that just as Christ came to the earth once to bear the sins of the world, so too he will return again to gather the elect to gather the elect and to usher in the resurrection of all things. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, Hebrews 9, 27 uh, to 28. On that day, the just will be resurrected to life, and the unjust to eternal conscious torment, torment separated from the love and grace of God. John 5, 28 to 29, paradise lost will become paradise restored. The problem of sin and Satan will fully and finally will be fully and finally resolved. Revelation 20 and 22. Uh, Revelation 23, uh, 22. So, so all Christians, all Christians true, Christians, true Christians, who belong, belong who are truly are God's truly elect and very loved, are those who are those believe, believe in the essential, the essential doctrines, doctrines of the Christian of faith. faith. But, but it's okay, okay for there to for be there debate. To be debate when it comes to eschatology, because eschatology is not eschatology is not necessarily necessary for salvation. So you don't have to hold to a particular eschatology to be saved. All you have to do is believe in the essential doctrines of the Christian faith. And Christ is going to return. Elect is going to be gathered to himself. The saved and unsaved will be resurrected. And be punished for their wicked ways to great white throne judgment. The unsaved 
different degrees of reward and blessing that you receive in hell and the blessings and rewards and the merits that you receive that those who are God's elect and saved. And that there is a final uh, world age and heaven age. So we don't have to believe a particular eschatology. You just have to believe in the essential doctrines of the Christian faith. And, you know, we unite on essentials and we don't divide on secondary issues like eschatology. that not all the book of Revelation has been fulfilled yet that there's some fulfilling that is still yet to take place but either case I will be either teaching the post millennialist partial preterists or at times I may preach the post millennialist uh, partial predators, partial historists, and partial futurists uh, eschatology. I, however, will not teach. The premillennial partial predators or historists or futurist perspective, nor will I teach the amillennialist partial predators, historists or Futurist perspective. And I definitely won't ever teach the pre uh, millennial dispensation, partial preterist, futurist, nor will I teach the Pre-millennial dispensational, dispensational, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib rapture theology. I will not teach that theology because for a fact, and I have strong uh, resolve in this fact, that the pre-millennial dispensational Preacher, mid-trip, mid post-trip, post rapture theology is, is a false doctrine, an apostasy, apostasy to the Word of God. God. I, shall I shall not teach, not teach the, the Word, word of, faith of Faith theology because it is also... It is also an impediment, an impediment and an apostasy, and an apostasy to the Word of God. God. Now, I'm not now, saying I'm not those saying who hold to, to a premillennial, pre hold to a premillennial pre dispensational pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, rapture, the, uh, Theology can't be saved or not be saved or not saved. Or and I don't say those who Who are mixed 
up in up that, in that word, word of faith of nonsense is not saved. Not saved. Because I believe, I believe if you truly you save, God will, God will correct, you correct you and make sure you make go sure in the, go right, in the direction right direction that you must, that you must go. go. This ministry is for all of you. Because I'm always going to be preaching to the reprobate, God's elect, and very elect. That is how the scriptures teach it. The scriptures teach to the reprobate, and the scriptures teach. To the elect and very elect. The whole panacea of mankind that are of of the elect of the seed of Christ Jesus. And I was going to touch on this a little bit, but I think I'm just going to give a brief note. In the New Testament, in the Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, there are, there is a lesson on the very, a lesson on the various seeds of the elect of Christ and the reprobate it communicates to on talks about these various seeds of the elect of Christ Jesus and the reprobate Which we may touch, I may do a message one of these times on. Already touched on it briefly, but I feel a spotitation that needs to take place there again. And so what? God wanted us, wanted to, know us to know through, through Psalm, 50 Psalm 50 that God that wants, God us, wants to us to pay witness. witness. God wants, God the, wants the elect and elect very elect and, elect and the Reprobate to pay witness to pay witness to the millennial mediatorial reign that began in the first century and what will take place during that millennium the period between Christ's ascension and return I should say uh, that once the the Old Testament elect and New Testament elect, Old Testament reprobation, reprobate, Old Testament reprobate and New Testament reprobate to pay 
witness, uh, pay witness, pay witness to, to Christ's, Christ's mediatorial, mediatorial millennial, millennial reign, reign and what is going what to is happen going to during happen that during mediatorial, mediatorial millennial reign, reign the period between Christ's, Christ's ascension and return. return. And we will we pay will witness, pay witness to, it. to it. So what is so what is prophetic word today? He does not does like not when you, when you Lightly esteeming him. And those who have become complacent in their life and settled for mediocrity rather than a real moving, transforming, changing faith. Going, going through the motions, emotions, being, being religious, religious, rather than rather being being religious in the true, true religion. religion. He wants, he you, wants you to get, to with, get it, with it. To get right, right. to have a true, true, genuine genuine thanksgiving and trust trust in in him, him. in the true True religion, religion. not being being religious, religious. going through the the motions motions. in a a mediocre state State that you are in. in. Well, and some of you are saying, wow, that's, wow, that's, he's just talking, talking to, to the unsaved. unsaved. No, he's no, actually, he's talking, actually to talking to his, his people, people here. here. Because he's saying some of you are participating in, are not participating in the edification of the second covenant of grace and God wants you to get with it and participate in the covenant of grace and the blessings and 
application he wants in your life. I said, some of you made that commitment, but then got misdirected it through the misdirection and misinformation of the devil. He wants you to get right and commit wholeheartedly to Him. Completely and fully participate in the edifications of the second covenant of grace, the second dispensation of the covenant of grace. The one true uh, impartable, impart, uh, partable sin the apostasy, impartable. Apostasy is re, uh, turning your back, refusing to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, and turning your back on Christ and staying in that condition until you die. And he's saying to you, I want you to want move you to from move a said from faith, faith to a real, a real genuine, genuine faith. faith. Because if you, if you turn your back on Christ and stay in that condition until you die, it's often said you lose your salvation. And that simply means you had a said faith rather than a genuine saving faith. It was a said faith rather than a real faith. And God is waiting patiently for you to repent of your sins and commit yourself wholeheartedly to Christ in all aspects of your life, having a real faith rather than a sin faith. So it seems when God speaks to David to Israel that he is referring to the final judgment. Upon the 
final judgment on the unsaved, but no, he's speaking to kingdom crumble and then he's speaking on the judgment that fall upon the house of Israel and the house of Judah later on. What a sick it was, a wicked and simple way. And to the house of Judah later on in the first century when Christ comes with his king um, so, so. so I'm 50 is talking about when the house of Israel and the house of Judah break of the old covenant and because of that the kingdom of Israel and Judah were destroyed and so God said to them that he would make a new covenant of grace with him by which he will save not only them but the Gentiles too. The old and new covenant. The old uh, covenant test or the old covenant in the Old Testament simply means the first dispensation of the covenant of grace. The new covenant in the New Testament means the second dispensation of the covenant of grace. So what he's basically saying, brothers and sisters, you got to fake it until you make it. Turn your neighbor and say, basically what Psalm 50 is telling you is that you got to fake it till you make it. The fake part means the positional right, your positional, uh, positional right standing before God. The make it part is the sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost bringing it to pass. He that done a good work carrying it to completion, making your positional right standing before God line up. line up in your personal life. Because
Yes, thanks be to God. He will preserve you till the end. Because we are saved by grace, justified by faith alone in Christ Jesus, saved unto works, not meritorious works. And so he will preserve you. Throughout your life, constantly correct you and point you back to the right direction. He won't let you fall too far. He'll pick you up. And put you on the right path, no matter what times to come. All the time, you'll keep on doing it throughout your life, correcting, teaching you. God, because he says he has done a good work, will carry it to completion. And so he will carry it to completion. He won't let you fall from grace too long. He will always correct you and put you on the right path. And you gotta fake it till you make it. Is what God is saying to you. You got to fake it till you make it. So, we gotta constantly. As I've said in the past, constantly recommit to the covenant of grace that God made with Jesus Christ. And we constantly need to fake it till we make it. And need constant correction. Constant recommitting to the covenant of grace wholeheartedly, mind, body, and soul. Serving Him in all aspects. Faking it until you make it. Turn to your neighbor and say, You got to make it till you, uh, you got to fake it till you make it. And God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, will help you to make it. So. You might say in in Psalm fifty verse one, the mighty one, God the Lord. The psalm opens impressively with Three divine names. Psalm fifty one from the rising sun to its setting means from East to west, God addresses the whole earth. Uh, verse 2, Zion, the location of the temple, the place God has chosen to make his presence known. That being his eternal temple, the second tabernacle.
is in fire, is in fire. And his throne, we have the word shines forth. It is language that indicates uh, the often a visual self-revelation of God. God's presence is manifested at his temple in Jerusalem. You know, the direction he's talking about his temple, his eternal temple, in a different dimension where Christ reigns at the right hand of God the Father, his temple, the second tabernacle, his empire. Verse 3, before him is a devouring fire. God's theophany is often accompanied by a powerful and dangerous force, especially when he speaks in judgment. Verse 5, a covenant with me by sacrifice a covenant is a solemn agreement between persons here as in most places it signifies the bonds between god and his people however since man is sinful this relationship must be accompanied by a sacrifice representing the punishment of sins Heavens, Heavens. A, a prophetic, poetic way of referring to the inhabitants of heaven, the angels, otherwise the glory of the inanimate created heavens, inanimate created heavens, testify this legal terminology is used because covenants were legal instruction instruction like contracts or treaties when there was some disruption in the people's faithfulness they were often put on trial by the lord or by one of his prophets We have in verse 8, not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. This verse indicates that the people's problems was not observation of the sacral uh, official rites. They were, they were faithful to do them, but they apparently mis understood their significance they were looking for a premillennial kingdom not a postmillennial kingdom verse 9 will not accept the people of the surrounding nations thought their gods ate the sacrifices offered to them and grew hungry when deprived we see that in various different types of gods of the Gentiles. Then oh. <clears throat> every beast through his force is mine. God affirms that he created and owns all the creatures of the world. Verse 13 and 14, I, uh, thir uh, 13 and 14, I eat the flesh of bulls, the red of uh, 
rhetorical question makes it clear that the Lord neither eats the sacrifices nor is he satisfied with them apart from sincere commitment and thanksgiving. Uh, 16, the wicked, probably the wicked people within the profession covenant community since they know God's laws. Know God's law. Recites. This may be a reference to the uh, covenant renewal ceremony in which the covenant community together recites the laws and affirms its intention to keep it. 17. Hates discipline, a sure sign of a fool. 18 and 19, the psalmist cites the 7th and 8th and 9th commandment. Verse 21, I have been silent, God silence. God's silence was frequently taken by the wicked as a sign that he didn't care if they sinned. Twenty-two, at least I tear you apart, God, and insist on obedience from the wicked hypocrites, or they will meet a faith a fearful end. In some ways, it's just like today, some of you are raised in the church, well, that doesn't necessarily mean you're saved. At some point in time, every person has to confess Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. At some point in time, you have to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, even though you may been raised with a Christian education, like a Catholic school or whatever. My friend, you could be a person right now that received a Christian education and raised in the church, raised with Christian thinking. An influence of the church may read the Bible or even preach the Word of God, but at some point everyone must make a confession of faith. There has to be that transforming event, that sexual calling that must take place. And so if you haven't haven't done that, that, you know, if you're you're saved or not, know that you've been raised raised in the church with Christian Christian education education and so forth, but don't know you're saved, saved, then then I have a salvation salvation message for you to go through through that will will teach you you how to... to Accept Christ as your Lord and Savior to have that born again experience. We all can become complacent in our lives. Comfortable. Settle for mediocrity. Wait. 
time to time have to check how genuine we are in the commitment of doing and fulfilling His will and purpose that He's called you to. Maybe you haven't been sincere enough and going out and trying to reach God's elect. Maybe you haven't been reading your Bible as much as you should have. Whatever it be, we come uh, for time to time have to make sure we're ready. Some of you are going to say, I don't understand that reverend, that fake it till you make it. Doesn't that sound kind of phony? No. No. Because if you fake it until you make it, eventually you'll make it. I turned to your neighbor and said, oh, you didn't get that. And so what God wants you to do is to fake it until you make it because he shall see to it that you make it. Which is the the seventh commandment? commandment. The seventh commandment is, Thou shalt not commit adultery. adultery. What is required required in the seventh seventh commandment? commandment. The seventh seventh commandment command, the seventh commandment requires, requires requires the preservation of our own and our our neighbor's neighbor's chastity. chastity. In heart, speech, and behavior. What is forbidden, what is forbidden in the seventh, the seventh commandment? The seventh commandment forbiddeth all unchaste thoughts, words, and actions. So we see the seventh commandment in there. Eighth. Which is the Eighth Commandment? The Eighth Commandment is, Thou shalt not steal. What is required in the Eighth Commandment? The Eighth Commandment requireth requireth lawful procuring and furthering the wealth and outward estate of ourselves and others. What is forbidden in the Eighth Commandment? The Eighth Commandment forbiddeth Whatsoever doth or may unjustly hinder our own or our neighbor's wealth or outward estate. Which is the, and what is the other commandment? We see the eighth commandment in there. We see the ninth commandment in that passage of scripture. What, what, what is, is, what, uh, which is the eighth commandment? Thou, sh- the eighth commandment is, thou shalt not steal. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. 
which is the ninth commandment. The ninth commandment is, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. What is required in the ninth commandment? The ninth commandment requires the maintaining and promoting of truth between man and man, and of our own and of our neighbor's good name, especially in bearing especially in witness bearing. <clears throat> what is forbidden in the Ninth Commandment? The Ninth Commandment forbiddeth whatsoever is What uh, the ninth commandment forbids whatever is in opposition to truth or injurious to our own or our neighbor's good name. Prejudicial and injurious, those words. And those, put it more simple terms, those words mean damaging and adverse. Resulting in harm, causing disadvantage, or harmful to somebody or something. Encouraging prejudice, leading to the formation of a prejudicious idea or opinion. Injurious, causing injury, causing harm, hurt, damage, or distress. Damaging somebody's reputation, damaging somebody's reputation, career, or chances of success. So, we see, in, as I said before, in verse... 18 and 19, the 7th, 8th, and 9th commandment. When Israel and Judah were disobedient to the 8th, Disobedient to the seventh and eighth and ninth commandment, which led to punishment, captivity, and the scattering. And again, the same the apostate house of Judah in the first century also broke the seventh, eighth, and ninth commandment words led to the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 A.D. and the scattering. And so we must remember to be obedient to the 7th, 8th, and ninth commandment in our lives. 
through the power of the Holy Ghost, God will empower you to keep those commandments along with the rest of the commandments. Uh, we positionally kept them and through the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, we will forever and eternity keep this seventh, eighth, and ninth commandment for all eternity. And not only that, but the rest of the commandments, God's moral, civil law. So he's telling you to fake it till you make it, brother and sister. Because if you fake it till you make it, eventually you will make it. And he that done a good work will carry to completion through the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost. And one day, both are positional, will line up with you completely through the sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost in the glorification I should say When I say when fake I say it fake until you make it, you make it, I mean, I mean that, that one day one your day you're positional, positional right standing right before standing God, God will, will eventually, eventually be, be a reality, reality completely for all. For all. Eternity. Eternity. The position will line, line up with, up with the, eternal. the eternal. Position will line, line up, up to become a reality for all, for all eternity. eternity. So anyway, this is the prophetic word that God wanted me to bring to you uh, this morning. And by now, this afternoon. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you and repent of our sins of omission and commission and ask you to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and empower us to do your holy will. And thank you for this edifying message. In Christ Jesus' name we pray and ask for the power of the Holy Ghost. Let there be healing brought through the edification of this message through the power of the Holy Ghost. In Christ Jesus' name we pray and ask for the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Now, I don't know how that applies to you. God will make known to you what it is for certain. A prophetic word that God, a prophetic word for this ministry and to you. And really to the world as a testimony and witness of God's elect in the house of Judah, God's elect in the house of Israel. And the reprobate. of the world. A call and a warning and a blessing.